on electric field and coulomb's law today we'll start with electric flux so let's do one thing let's solve it together so i'm giving you one minute to solve this question number uh, two and just please write your answer Solve this question. Sir, I have two. doubt in one derivation. Because, yes, we'll discuss it at the end of the class. Huh, Arpit? Discuss it at the end. Okay, sir. with this question number two. So the electric field is given. The shape is given. The square side is given. Just calculate the electric flux. Okay. I got answer from Nazia. What about the rest? She's a small formula based thing. Okay. Good answer from Sakina also. What about rest? Sakina Abbas, Miraj, Hishma, Arpit. Sir, I said. It's a simple formula based calculation. Sir, you received my answer. Hmm? You received my answer. No, I am the co-host, I guess. I'm the co-host. Okay, I'm solving it. See, this is a straightforward calculation. The electric field is given. Huh? Electric field is... Right, Arpit, it's correct. Electric field is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 I cap. The side of the square is 10 centimeter. So... Side is 10. That means area of the square will be. First of all, convert this 10 centimeter into meter. So 10 raised power minus 2. And since it's a square, so area is side square. So this much square. So this will be 10 raised to the power minus 1 square. 10 raised to the power minus 2 meter square. Now the question says, this area is perpendicular to electric field which means area vector is parallel to electric field. So if area vector is parallel to electric field, means you can write your area vector as 10 raised to the power minus 2 i cap meter square. So your flux is simply the dot product of electric field and area vector. So the electric field is 3 into 10 raised power 3. Area vector is 10 raised power, sorry, 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 i cap dot it's 10 raised to the power minus 2 i cap so when you take dot product i cap dot i cap is 1 so this is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 so that comes out to be 30 so it's 30 volt meter or you can write newton per meter newton per coulomb meter square after this, this question number three would be your homework. Huh? This assignment is in your student account. So along with question, there are solutions also. You can refer those solutions. So do this as a homework. Is it clear for everyone? Miraj, Hishma, Sakina Abbas? Yes, sir. Yes, See, there sir. is no point of this discussion and this revision if you are not participating.
also uh, we have shared uh, the timings of the classes revision classes so if you want to revise entire first book then uh, amna ma'am is doing that revision so if any one of you have missed something or want the complete chapter you can join up so amna. that class is every day i uh, maybe it's saturday and sunday it's already on the group you can at least revise first two three chapters there so this is 30 newton per coulomb meter square this will be your homework after this uh, okay not this yeah do this question <coughs> this question is based on gauss law so i'm giving you a uh, basics of gauss law that using gauss law flux is q enclosed by epsilon not and the key concept in this question is that if you have a closed surface then if field lines are crossing this closed surface then the flux entering the surface and flux leaving the surface will be same so the total flux will be two field lines are entering here so the entering flux is negative two field lines are leaving the surface so the leaving flux will be positive so minus 2 plus 2 will be zero so field lines are crossing a closed surface that means net flux through the closed surface is zero this should be a closed surface so this is a hint for this particular question do it and write your answer in chat and remember you can apply gauss law only if your surface is closed like you can't apply gauss law for an open surface It's three minutes for this question. It's forty-two. This is the hint. Huh? Flux. If you have a closed surface, then flux entering the surf closed surface will be equal to the flux leaving the closed surface. Just two more minutes. Okay, a bit. Okay, Maraj. Just for one more minute. After this, I'll start. So, okay, Nazia. Sakina, Ishma. Good, Sakina. Okay, let's solve it together. Sakina is correct, Nazia is correct, Miraj is correct, Arpit is wrong, and the rest no one answers. So see, this is a hemisphere. Hemisphere is not an open surface, closed surface. So you can't apply Gauss law here. So if you want to apply Gauss law for this is a hemisphere, right? This is a hemisphere. So if you want to apply Gauss law here, so what you will do, put a disc over here. over this hemisphere just place a disk so this is a disk you place this disk over the hemisphere so when you place disk over the hemisphere now this is a closed surface so you can say flux entering the closed surface will be equal to flux leaving the closed surface so that net flux enclosed by the closed surface is zero 
So if you look at this diagram clearly, the flux is entering through the disc, huh? this is disc, and it is leaving through the hemisphere. So you can say that flux, which is entering through the disc, plus the flux which is leaving the hemisphere should be equal to zero. So you can write that flux leaving the hemisphere should be equal to negative of flux entering in the disk. Now disk is a plane surface. For plane surface, you can easily calculate your flux. Like you can write your flux as it's E dot S. Or you can say that this will be equal to minus of electric field. Now see, this is your disk. The area vector is outwards, it's away from, and electric field is inward. So the angle between this electric field and this area vector, they are in opposite directions, so would be 180 degree. So you can write this as this is E S cos 180. Cos 180 is minus one. So you can write this as E S one. Cos 180 is minus one. What is S? S is the area of the disk. So how much is the area of disk? It's E into pi r square. So the correct option is to do it. If you have doubts, I can repeat it again. So if you are revising from this assignment, don't uh, do questions from NEAT. Just do questions which I'm asking you to revise. This is an important question. This is a NEAT, but it can come in your exam also. Ishma, Arpit, is it clear now? Sir, we won't add it. We added it, no? You, you don't know what's the value of the flux which is leaving the hemisphere. So we just add the flux entering the disk plus flux leaving the hemisphere is equal to zero. So you can say the flux leaving the hemisphere is minus of flux entering the disk. So which is minus of E to pi R square. Okay. Yes, can I scroll it now? Ishma, Sakina, Sakina Bas, written? Yes, sir. Sakina Bas, is it clear? Yes, sir. But you're you not answering any question. What's the reason? Sikina just, uh, just will discuss it after the class, see, okay? So if you want to revise the full theory of this chapter that we can discuss at the end of the class. Huh? So don't leave the meeting, we'll discuss. Okay, so This is question number two. Answers.
Okay, see. The electric flux through a closed Gaussian surface depends upon, see, the formula for the electric flux using Gauss law is its cube epsilon naught. So this is epsilon naught if you have free space. If you have a medium, then it will be q by k epsilon naught. So the flux depends upon charge. It depends upon the medium of the medium. So correct option is A is the correct option. It depends upon net charge in close and permittivity of the medium. Uh, no, this is a very good question. Do this question number five. So this will take some time. So it's 8.51, you can take three minutes. It will take three minutes. Question number five. Anshika, Alia, solve question number five. It's cost law. Question number five. Answers. Okay. Just two more minutes. Alia, Miraj, Noha. It's okay. Okay, Miraj.
ओके सो लेट्स ऑल बेटा सेकेंड अब बस स्विच ऑन योर वीडियो यू आर स्टार्टेड द फोकस मोर सो नो वन एल कैन सी यू and please don't leave the meeting after the class i have to discuss something with you so on your video please and maraj if you don't answer questions the next would be you you have to open your video also See, this is a cylinder. The area of cross section of the cylinder is twenty-five centimeters square. Length of the cylinder is one meter. This is the electric field, fifty xi cap, reasonably, and x is in meter. Find the net flux for the cylinder. So this is the origin. This end of the cylinder is placed at a separation of one meter. So the electric field is it's fifty xi cap. So this is. Just one second. Yeah. So you have to calculate the value of electric field here. Then you will calculate value of electric field here. Then you will calculate flux through the entire surface. So if you have a cylinder, then to calculate flux through the cylinder, what we do? We divide cylinder into three categories. First end. This is end one. Second end, that's end two, and this is the curved surface. Remember, you can't solve cylinder in one single step. If you want to solve cylinder, divide it into three parts: first two ends and a curved surface. So, if you want to calculate flux for the first end, let's calculate flux for end one. N1 is a plane surface. For plane surface, the formula of flux is: if you want to calculate flux at N1, this is electric field at N1 dot area vector at N1. How much is electric field at N1? See, electric field is not constant. Electric field depends upon the value of x. For N1, the value of x is one meter. This is the value of x. So to calculate electric field at N1, just Put x equal to one here, so it will be fifty i cap dot. Then you need area vector for this end one. The area is this area is twenty five centimeter square. So to convert this into meter, so that will be twenty five into ten raised to the power minus four. Direction of area vector is away from the area, so this will be the direction of area vector, negative x-axis. So the unit vector along negative x-axis is minus i cap. So phi one is, it's fifty i cap. Dot. It's minus of twenty-five into ten raised to the power minus four i. So the phi one is. The coefficient of i cap here is fifty. The coefficient of i cap is here minus twenty five into ten raised to minus four. So twenty five into five, which is one twenty five, into ten raised to the power minus three newton per coulomb meter square. So this is for end one. Now let's calculate flux to the second end. The direction of area vector is away from the normal. So this is the direction of area vector for the second end. I cap here. So for n two, the flux is phi two, which is e two dot s two. So how much is e two? For e two, you need this x coordinate. Up to here, it's one. The length of the cylinder is also one meter. So this is also one meter. So for this n two, for this particular end, the x coordinate is one plus one, which is equal to two meter. So for second end, the value of x is not one meter. The value of x is two meters. So we'll write this as it's fifty into two i cap. Fifty into two i cap 
dot area vector. So area vector will be same. See, this is 25 centimeters square. The magnitude of area is 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. And for this particular end, the direction is away means it's along x axis i gap. So this is 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 i gap. So when you, when you multiply it, 15 to 2 is 100. 25 into 10 raised to the minus 4. So that is 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 i cap. Sorry, not i cap, it's minus 2 Newton per cooler meter square. This is flux through N2. Then you need flux through the curved surface also. So for curved surface, the formula is, let's write this as phi 3. You can't calculate flux just by taking the dot product for a curved surface. For the curved surface, you need integral. So it will be integral of E dot ds. See, your electric field is along x-axis. What is the direction of area vector for this particular? If I take this element, what is the direction of area vector? X-axis, y-axis, z-axis. To z. To z-axis. It's either y-axis or z-axis. Direction of area vector is perpendicular to the surface. This is j-gap. So it's integral of e dot ds. So electric field and this area vector. What is the angle between them, Noah? Angle between electric field and area vector? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So that's E ds cos 90. So that will be 0. So the flux through uh, N1 is this. Flux through N2 is this. And this is the flux to the curve surface. So for total flux, what you can do is, so the total flux is phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3. Phi 1 is minus 125 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. Phi 2 is this 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. Am I doing right? Hundred. Yes, 25 into 10 raised to minus 3. Plus for the curved surface, it's zero. So this will be you can write this as 250, 250, and 125. It's 125 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3 Newton per Coulomb meter square. Is there any option? Yes, the first one. 0.125 Newton meter square per Coulomb. See, this is 25. So where is it? This is 125 into 10 raised to minus 3. So when you convert this in decimal, this is 0 0.125 Newton per Coulomb meter square. So if you want to calculate charge enclosed also, so uh, Mehraj, how will you calculate charge enclosed? Mehraj. So if phi is equal to uh, Q, uh, Q, uh, Q enclosed is equal to phi into epsilon naught. Right. Phi is Q enclosed by epsilon naught. So you can write that Q enclosed is phi to epsilon. So phi is 0 0.125 into epsilon naught, which is 8.85 into 10 raised to the power of minus. That's it. So this is the value of charge. So the correct option is A. Is it clear? See, these questions are solved examples of NCRT with a small modification. This exact question is in NCRT, but in NCRT, the field is not variable. The given field is constant. This is a variable field. So this is a slight modification in numerical of NCRT. Note it down, please.
Can I scroll it down? हाँ जी रिटर्न अब ये ड्यूरेशन इज़ नॉट फिक्स हीर आई हैव टू फिनिश सर्टेन टॉपिक्स आई हैव टू फिनिश पोटेंशियल एंड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी आल्सो देन ओनली आर So can I move on to next question? If all have, if you all have written, Sakina, Nazia. Yes, Arpit. sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. So that was about Gauss law. After this question, you should uh, do this one, huh? Just. Wait. This you should solve this question. This is also on cylinder. And then after this, you should do this question. This is based on Q. So, in just like cylinder, in cylinder we divide the cylinder into three parts, but here we divide cube into six parts. We'll calculate flux due to each part, then we'll add add them up. So, take these two questions as your homework assignment. This is question six, and then question number eight. After this, let's uh, the rest are. Okay, do this this question also. Question number ten. Solve this. Last question of Gauss law. Then we will uh, continue with potential. The key to bus at least answer this question. This is straightforward and cost. Or write in chat room if you are not, uh, if you want to revise the chat. If this is not your strong topic, just write in chat room. I'll arrange some classes for you. I'm the co-host here. Because you just have 15 to 20 days. Right? If you have issues with some one, two, three, four chapters, we can arrange some one-on-one -on -one classes also. But at least I should know in what chapter you need help. So this is the kind of syllabus that you can't complete in one week. 
you need to, or as a teacher, we need two, three weeks to finish three, four chapters. And it's not just for Sakina, it's for all of you. If you have issues in any of the chapter, just let me know. I will arrange some one-on-one -on -one sessions also. Sir, I have issues in AC, so I have to do that. Yeah, have issues in AC, okay. Okay. I got answers from Sakina, Anshika, Arpit, Naziha, Alia, no answer, Mehraj, no answer, Noha. Kaha gai hai, Bichi? Okay. Noha, Anshika. Okay, Anshika gave back. Okay, let's solve it together. Huh? So you have uh, two hollow concentric spheres, S1 and S2, in closing charge QQ and 4Q respectively, as shown in figure. So this is first sphere. Inside the first sphere, you have charge 2Q. This is second sphere. Inside the second sphere, you have charge 4Q. You need the ratio of electric flux through them. So the formula that we'll be using here is that of Gauss law, 5 is Q epsilon naught. So if you want to calculate flux through the first sphere, this is the first sphere. The charge inside is 2Q. So that is 2Q divided by epsilon naught. If you want to calculate flux through the second sphere, now just calculate. Inside the second sphere, you have two charges, 2Q and 4Q. So the net charge is 6Q divided by epsilon naught. If you want ratio, just divide F1 and phi 1 and phi 2. So this is 2q over epsilon naught. Then this is 6q over epsilon naught. Epsilon naught will cancel this epsilon naught. Q will cancel this q. 2 by 6 is 1 by 3. So this is the rate for the part 1. So D option 1 by 3. Second is how will the electric flux to the sphere S1 change if a medium of dielectric constant is used in the space inside S1 in place of air? So inside S1, if you have a medium of dielectric constant epsilon R here, so what you will do, instead of writing Q by epsilon R, you will write flux as Q by epsilon R into epsilon R. So the charge inside the first sphere is 2Q. So we will write this as, this is 2Q divided by epsilon R into epsilon R. This is how we calculate. So the correct option is, uh, yeah, 2Q by this, uh, D option is correct. So these are the type of questions which can come in your exam from Gauss law. And remember, these are your homework. Huh? This question is homework. It would be better if you can do this question also. Huh? This is basically a question from NCRT. This is a question of NCRT. So, so that was about Gauss law. Let's move on to electric potential now. So before starting questions on electric potential, I'm giving just a short introduction of potential, the list of relations that we will be using. So if you have a point charge, first relation, and if you want to calculate potential at a separation R from the point charge, then the expression of potential is it's K Q by R. Now. This is potential at a separation R from the point charge. If point charge is positive, then potential will be positive. If point charge is negative, then your potential will be negative. It will be minus Q by R. What is the value of Q, Sakin Abbas? What's the value of this K, the electric, uh, this K that we use in Coulomb's law or in the expression of electricity? 1 by 4, 5, 7, uh, RP just one minute. Huh? Sakina, what's the numerical value of this K? We have discussed in the last class also. 
remember this k is 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 that is a numerical value of this k. Uh, sir uh, 4 into 10 to the power 7 no no, no. it's 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 okay this is the value of this case 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 so this is expression for potential due to a point charge if you have a number of point charges, let's say you have a charge Q1, you have a charge Q2, you have a charge Q3, and you want to calculate potential, then what you will do, you will calculate potential due to the individual charges. And then you will add them up. Total potential will be V1 plus V2 plus V3. Just calculate potential due to individual charges and add them up. And to calculate potential due to a single charge, this is the expression. It's KQ by R. Where K is this value, Q is the charge, R is the separation. Potential is comparative easy because potential is a scalar quantity. You don't need vector additions or vector subtraction to solve these problems. Along with this, there's one more relation that we use in the numerical of potential. That is, say you have two charges, two points, A and B. Potential at A is VA and potential at B is BB. You take a charge Q, you want to take this charge from A to B. So work done by external force in carrying charge from A to B is Q potential at B minus potential. So this is how we calculate potential. Huh? Work done is Q VB minus V. So in usually the numer numericals of potential, we use these expressions. We use this for a point charge, with this we use this if you have more than one point charge and we use this expression to calculate the work. So let's do some problems. If anyone want to note these expressions, you can write. If you want to write, note down these expressions, you can write, then we'll start with the numerical. Most of the numericals will be based on these expressions only point charge, for a number of point charges and the expression of work. So I'm giving two minutes. If you want to write, just note it down and we'll start with the numerical second. Sir? Yes, sir, Pith. So I wanted to ask like the derivation list you shared, sir. Mm -hmm. Like, is that enough for the CBS exam that I Yeah, can... that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. See, I don't uh, mention any derivation from semiconductors. There is no derivation in semiconductors. There is no derivation in uh, modern physics also. There is just one derivation in modern physics. That's for Bohr's theorem. That's it. I'm preparing some important questions also, a list of some important numericals that one should know before attempting your Bohr's exams. So these questions are from NEET, sir, which we are doing. Uh, these are mixture of questions. These are from uh, previous years, CBSE also. These are some modified questions, like these type of questions are asked in uh, CBSE. So I'm just trying to cover all type of questions in this discussion now. So I hope everyone have written up to you. So let's start with the question, the point charge. Uh, this is a good question. Do this question. Question number three. Don't worry about the answer, whether it's correct or wrong. At least attempt this. And if you are getting any answer which is not in the option, then just write that answer in chat room. The formula that we are using here is same KQ by R, nothing else. And don't substitute the value of K here, huh? because the numerical value of charge is not given, the numerical value of separation is not given. So there's no point in writing the value of K. These questions are from previous years, CBSE only. Huh? See, don't expect a theoretical question uh, from physics, theoretical uh, paper in physics. 
you won't be getting straightforward questions. You will get derivations, but hardly uh, the weightage will be 10 marks to 15 marks. The weightage of derivation will be just 10 to 15 marks. Otherwise, you will get conceptual questions and minutes. That methods of charging sector cannot be asked in the exam. In the usually theoretical they don't, Usually, they don't ask questions from those topics. If you look at last 10 years, they are very, very rare questions from those topics. Answers. Okay, I got answer from Sakina. What about the rest? Arpit? Present. Mm -hmm. Miraj, Noha, Ishma, Anshika, Alia. See, these are straightforward questions. Sir, I have also sent. You also sent. Who? Noha? Or Sakina? Sir, Anshika. Anshika. Uh, Anshika. Anshika, I'm the co-host. Huh? I think you sent to host. I'm the co-host. So I have also sent. I'm Naziha. Naziha. Yes, 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 I got your answer. Yes, I got answers. Okay, fine. Let's check. Huh? So you have two charges, a charge Q and a charge minus Q. That plays at a separation D apart. Huh? So this is Q. And this is minus two. They are placed at a distance D apart. So find the location of point related to charge Q at which potential due to the system of charge is zero. So uh, let's assume that potential here is zero. So this separation is X. This separation is C. There are many, many possibilities. This separation is T plus X. So see, potential can be zero here. Your potential can even be zero in this region, but potential will not be zero here. So let's check all possibilities one by one. Let's first take check these possibilities. It seems this separation is X. Then how much is this separation? How much is this one, this separation? If this is D, this is X, how much is this? D minus X. D minus X. So over this point P, both charges Q and minus Q will generate some potential. What you can do is just calculate potential at P due to Q. So what is potential at P due to Q? That is KQ by X. Then calculate potential at P due to minus Q. What is that potential? That's K2Q divided by D minus X is equal to zero. So next you can write this as KQ by X is k into 2q by d minus x. So this k will cancel this k, q will cancel this q, just cross multiply them. So you get d minus x is 2x. So you get d equal to 3x. So you get x equal to 3 by 3. Is it clear? Is there any option d by 3? Yes, d by 3 is the option. See, you can check one more possibility. Your potential can be zero here. Let's check this possibility. Yeah. So if I'm checking potential, this is P. Let's call this point as A. Okay. Let's check the possibility of potential to be zero at A. Here we are checking the possibility of potential at P. 
So at A, your potential is K Q X. Due to this minus 2Q, this is D plus X. You can write minus K into 2Q divided by D plus X, which is equal to 0. So this is KQ by X is K into 2Q by D plus X. Q will cancel Q, K will cancel K, just cross multiply them. So you get D plus X is equal to 2X. So you can take it to the right hand side. It's 2x minus x, so x equal to 2. Okay, so there is also. So potential can be 0 over here, which is at a separation of d by 3 from the charge q. Or your potential can be 0 here, which is x equal to d. So in this question, d is not given, only d by 3 is given. So this is the answer. But if you have an option which is d by 3 and d, this will be the most appropriate answer. I'm giving you a hint to check. See, uh, there's one trick. Potential will be zero near the smaller charge always. So out of Q and minus two Q, Q is the smaller charge. So potential will be zero near Q, not near two minus two. That's why I didn't ch even check there. If you try to check here, you will get X to be negative. And X is separation. Separation can't be negative. So I'm repeating again. Potential will be zero near the smaller charge. That's it. Sakina, you switch off your video again. No, it down, please. Is it clear? Oh, okay, yeah, let's do another question. Uh, yeah, this is a good question. Do it. Question number five. This will take from four or five minutes, but it's an important question. You should know this. So instead of two charges, you have four charges. Huh? One is Q, Q, minus Q, minus Q. You have to calculate a potential at O, then potential at F, and work done in carrying charge O2. So the hint is first calculate potential at O. Potential at O is straightforward. You can just write the answer just by looking at the diagram. Then calculate potential at F and then work done. For work done, the relation is work done from O to E is charge into potential at E minus potential at
answers okay what is potential at o this is the easiest part rishma what is potential at o are this is straight forward हाँ जी महराज पोटेंशियल एट ओ सर जीरो जीरो वेरी गुड बिकॉज यू हैव फोर चार्जेस दे आर एट इक्वल सेपरेशन फ्रॉम ओ सो द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू ईच ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल चार्जेस विल गेट्स कैंसल आउट यू गेट जीरो पोटेंशियल एट ओ बट यस फॉर पॉइंट एफ you need to calculate no how was your j mains exams sir it's on first feb it's on first feb did you check the question paper of these uh, recent attempts 24 26 yes sir so how was the questions you find them easy or जी नो 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 हा इट्स फिफ्टी फिफ्टी is anyone solving this question anshika see no in any exam you get 50% questions from 11 and 50% for 12 it's 50 50% division yes sir Okay, no one is solving it. Regina, Nazia, any answers? Still doing, sir. Sure. Okay, let's take two more minutes. Then I will then I will stop. Yes, sir, I'm not getting, sir. It's all together. See, this is a square, huh? Noha, any answer? See, these are four charges. One is plus q, and there is minus q, and there is minus q, plus q. 
this is point o you have to calculate potential at the side of the square is here so the separation of all charges from the center of this square is a by root 2. this is a by root 2 this is also a by root 2 this is also a by root 2 this is also a by root 2. so the potential at o is sum of potential due to each of individual charges that's k q by a by root 2 It's minus of kq by a by root 2. Next, due to negative charge, it's minus of kq by a by root 2. Due to positive charge, this is kq by a by root 2. So, this will cancel this, this will cancel this potential at OS. But if you want to calculate potential somewhat here at point f, then you need this separation. Huh? This separation is a by 2. So for this separation, you can use Pythagoras theorem. Let's call this as some A. Let's call this as some B. This is C. This is D. Then you need AF. So to calculate AF, what we can do is we can use this Pythagoras theorem. This is A square plus it's A by 2 whole square. So this is A square plus A square by 4. How much is this? will be 5A square by 4. Or you can say this is A by 2. 2 root 5. Similarly, you can also calculate this df. This is df, which is a by 2 root 5. So, to calculate potential at f, what we can do is it's kq by it's a, a by 2 root 5. Then potential due to the negative charge, it's minus of kq. The separation of this negative charge from f is a by 2. Then this is minus q, the separation is again a by 2, it's minus kq by a by 2. Then due to this charge, the separation is this a root 5 by 2 again. Plus kq by a root 5 by 2. So see, these two terms will get added up or what? let's calculate this thing. Nah? Let's take some common. The KQ by A is common. This 2 will go to numerator. So this is 2 by root 5. This 2 will go to numerator. So this is 2 here. This 2 will go to numerator. This is 2 here. This will 2 go to numerator. So that's 2 by root 5. So the potential at point F is it's KQ by A. It's 2 by root 5 plus 2 by root 5, which is 4 by root 5 minus 2 minus 4 is minus 4. Huh? This is the potential at point F. So what we have to calculate, what will the work done carrying charge E from O to E and from O to F? First O to E, where is E? This is E. Let's first calculate work done from O to F, then we'll decide. Oops. So work done from O to F. You are carrying an electron, it's minus E, potential at F, minus potential at O. So, work done from O to F is minus E. What is potential at F? That's KQ by A. It's 4 by root 5 minus 4. And what is potential at A? That's 0. So, this minus E, KQ by A, 4 by root 5 minus 4. That's the answer for the potential from O to F. So, which one is the correct answer? Right option. Okay, so answer is given in terms of 1 over 4 per epsilon naught. So this minus of E, you can write this K as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. It's Q divided by A. You can take this 4 also as common and you are left with 1 by root by 5 minus 4. See this 4 will cancel this 4. It's minus of E, it's Q by Pi epsilon naught a, it's 1 by root 5 minus 1. That's what that from. So, is there any of correct option? Q e by pi epsilon naught a, 1 by root 5 minus 1. Yeah. So, I I'm not doing WOE. You can calculate WOE, right? The same way. For 
this W O E will also the expression will be same. So I believe for W O E the method will be same, but there will be change in the value of potential at. Is it clear now, Nazia? Yes. Okay, do it. Arpit, Vishma. Apit, any doubt in this calculation? Noha? No, sir. Okay, so we'll stop here. Taking up bus, you want to. Uh, we'll stop here. Uh, in the next class on Wednesday, we will continue with the numericals of potential energy. And uh, I believe we'll finish capacitance also. Meanwhile, if you have individual doubts that we can discuss after the class. So the session, numerical solving session, will be for one hour or one hour, 15 minutes. And after this, we can have open doubt sessions. So, uh, Anyone have doubts today? Kishma, Miraj, Nazia, Noha, Sagina. So is perical capacitors there in our syllabus? Perical capacitors, no, it's not in your syllabus. It's only parallel plate. Okay, sir.
Okay, so if you don't have any doubts, you can leave. Uh, we'll continue this on Wednesday. But please solve numericals from these assignments. Some questions are tough, but they are important for exams. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, sir.